Number 10. Even when shut down after a period of normal use, a large commercial nuclear reactor transfers thermal energy at a rate of 150 megawatts by the radioactive decay of fission products. This heat transfer causes a rapid increase in temperature if the cooling system fails. Chernobyl, anyone? Letter A. Calculate the rate of temperature increase in degrees Celsius per second. If the mass of the reactor core is 1.6 times 10 to the 5 kilograms, and it has an average specific heat of 0.3349 kilojoules per kilogram Celsius. All right. So uh, first thing is, it sounds, I mean, it doesn't, it definitely sounds like it, right? I mean, they're giving us mass. They're giving us a specific heat here. So more than likely, we're going to be using this formula. But I know the problem that you might be thinking. You might be saying, well, that's great. I mean, I can calculate temperature, uh, but we don't know the, just the energy, right? We know the power. Now, I can make one adjustment to that equation so that we can substitute in power instead of just energy. Watch. So here we have Q is equal to mc delta t. Now you know with the rules of math that whatever I do to one side of the equation, I should also do to the other side of the equation. So if I were to divide this side by, let's say, seconds, aka time, then I would also have to divide this side by time. Now if I do that, watch what happens. I put this over t, and then I put this over t. Now the, the key insight here is that energy per time, right here, energy per time, is power. That is the definition of power. Recall that power is equal to energy over time. Now I know that it's Q here. The only reason why it's Q is because it's heat energy, but energy is energy. So, well, I mean, there's different forms of energy. I mean, you know what I mean. Um, so in this particular case, we can now call this power is now equal to mass times specific heat times change in temperature, all divided by the time. Now what we are after, again, we are after calculating the temperature increase in degrees Celsius, right, per second. So basically I want to now find this, temperature per time. So my goal here is to solve now this equation for capital T over lowercase t, meaning temperature per unit time. So I'm gonna bring then the mass and the specific heat on over to the left-hand side, right? By dividing it out. So it's going to be the power divided by then the mass multiplied by the specific heat will equal now the change in temperature per time or the rate of temperature change, right? And lo and behold, problem simple. It's simple now, right? It's very simple. So now all we have to do is plug in. Now just remember, you got to make sure you have the right units. All right, so they gave it to us in megawatts, but we need it in watts. So just multiply that value by 10 to the sixth, okay? So it's gonna be 150 times 10 to the sixth. I'm going through the convergence quickly here because they should be good at this point. The mass here is 1.60 times 10 to the fifth kilograms. That's the appropriate unit. And then just be careful with this. All the uh, units are correct except for the kilojoule, right? We'd, we'd like to have that in joule. And um, what I'm going to do then uh, is Basically, I have to then uh, uh, multiply that, excuse me, by 1,000, all right? So now that's going to be uh, 300, 334.9. Don't know why that took me so long. It's a little early, I think. And I didn't get too much sleep last night. What are you going to do? So here it is, guys. All right, now all we have to do is just plug it on into the calculator, okay? All right, so 150 times 10 to the 6th divided by then parenthesis 1.6 times 10 to the 5th multiplied then by 334.9. And here we get about, so every second, and this is pretty pretty, pretty fast, so the, every second the temperature will be changing by a value of 2.8 or so, 2.99, 2.80, Right, 2.80, I guess, with sig figs, degrees Celsius. So that uh, doesn't take long for it to overheat, right? 10 seconds, that's 28 degrees Celsius. 100 seconds, right, that's 280 degrees Celsius. 100 seconds isn't even two minutes. So 
you can kind of see how this can get out of control quite quickly. Anyway, letter B. How long would it take to obtain a temperature increase of 2,000 degrees Celsius, uh, which could cause some metals holding the radioactive materials to melt? So I actually, I mean, I was basically just mentioning right how to kind of do it. So we can basically use this uh, same formula here, um, and we can, I mean, if we want it, but we can, we can also think about it commonsensically, right? If this is the, we can just use this particular formula here, right? Change in temperature, I think, let's just simplify it, so we'll keep it this way. Change in temperature over time is equal to 2.80, that's the rounded number. They're telling us that the temperature increase now is going to be 2,000. So 2,000 is going to go in for delta T, divided by then that change in time, basically, right? The, the time it takes to uh, reach 2,000 degrees Celsius. And that's then equal to 2.80. So just do a cross multiplication here, right? So it's going to leave you with then 2,000 over 2.8 is equal to T. And then just plug that on into the calculator. So 2,000 divided by, I'm using the exact value there uh, for the 2.799934, whatever. And then we have about 714, 714 seconds. All right, 714 seconds. That's equal to the change in time. All right, and then if you wanted that in minutes, just divide it by 60 to get a feel. And that's about 12 minutes. So not too long to increase 2,000 degrees. Okay. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this video helped. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next problem. Take care.